We acknowledge the traditional custodians of Canberra, the Ngunnawal and Ngabri people, their elders past and present, and we will walk gently on their sacred ground. We acknowledge the members of the Tongan Royal family currently residing here in Canberra, the leaders of this country, and representatives of all Pacific Island nations here. Welcome everyone to the Lo'au University Multimedia Program, Storytelling. My name is Luciana Lafitani. On this rather cool autumn afternoon or morning in Canberra, Wednesday, 14th of April, 2021. This program brings people from all, all communities and cultural backgrounds here in Australia and from all over the world to tell you their story. Everyone has a story. And if I'm not mistaken, everyone likes to hear a story. Anyway, from this morning here in our studio today, I have Professor Greg Fryer. Even though I met Greg a number of years ago, I still do not know much about him. So today, you and I are going to find out a little bit more about Professor Greg Fryer, the man. <laughs> also, just to remind you that this Friday, 16th of April, Professor Fryer will be on the Lo'au Multimedia Program once more to talk to Professor Lafitani about his academic life. So don't forget to tune in. Professor Fryer, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lucy. Mm. Thank you for calling in. And um, as I said to you previously, that this is an easy, fun program. This is when we get to introduce you to our listeners and people who watch about you as a person other than an academic or a professor or whoever. So this is a fun part about what you like to do. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll start off by where? Where were you born, Greg, or how did you get to this country? <laughs> well, I'm a Sydney boy and uh, from, from the North Shore of Sydney. Yes. And uh, born there and uh, left Sydney for Canberra when I was about 22. Oh. And uh, it, it's in the Canberra that I became very interested in the Pacific Islands. But uh, okay. so up to up to my youth, I suppose, was all in Canberra and my early undergraduate education mm -hmm. was all in Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then early years of working in Canberra. Mm. OK, so Canberra seems to be the place mm. and still is. It still is. Yes. Yeah. So who shares your life, Greg? Do you have, uh, I know, I think I've seen you with a puppy, with a dog. Uh, sadly, no more. No more? No more, no. But I share my life with a, a lovely wife, Annie. Yes, yes. And uh, with children and uh, one child, well, one child and a grandchild and uh, plenty of nieces and nephews, all mostly around Canberra, which is rather lovely. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. Because mm. I think someone was saying that, you know, as much as you know it's wonderful being in Australia and I'm talking about our people from the Pacific but it's being away from country yeah and yeah. it's being away from other family yeah so it takes quite a an effort to travel back or and even cost too yeah. but here in Australia I guess it's a bit easier to travel back and forth or go to Melbourne and Sydney it is, and I feel I feel very rooted in Canberra. I feel very related to where we live right here in Ainsley, and mm. uh, I go up for a walk for an hour every morning on the yes. in Mount Ainsley, and uh, I, just, I just love the, the the community here and the, yeah. the atmosphere. So uh, it is I do feel yes. this is home. Yeah. Yes, and I you know I feel really fortunate and lucky to be living here in Ainsley because mm. it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. And, you know, even with all the different seasons, yes. the place changes. You know, we've got our lovely plum trees that burst out in colour every spring. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then trees changing in the autumn and getting quite cold. But this is a, a beautiful place. Mm. And there have been times where I've posted various photos on my Facebook page just to let family know where I am. Mm. But apart mm. from that, Canberra is a, a quite an amazing place. Particularly for a Pacific specialist. So when you come yes. here, if, if your interest is the Pacific, then there's so many different specialists. Mm. And it's also a place where a lot of students have come from the Pacific. That's which, right. Which is where I got my first friendships with Pacific friends. 
and uh, that's, that really led me into the study of the Pacific. So it, mm. it's really a centre for Pacific studies. So that's what I liked about it and why yes. I really stay, you know, in terms of professional interests yes. as well as uh, personal interests. Because uh, right from the start as a student, I had a lot of Pacific friends uh, as well as doing the actual Pacific studies itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I, I guess that's been... I know there's been conversations before with Siwa and colleagues of when they arrived in Canberra mm. and the community, the community have taken it on mm. as they're the, sort of like a home away from home for students that come, especially mm. at ANU, mm. you know, mm. because I guess there's a, um, you know, especially if, if they're coming from the Tong government, mm. they're, they're coming as uh, in a scholarship, with a scholarship. So when they're here, they're usually here with their anyone else mm. but the community have taken on to look after them and mm. in various ways so wonderful stories of, of community life in Canberra too. yeah it's a lot of active uh, well it's an active Tongan community and there Samoan is. community Fijian lovely yes. Fijian days and so on yes. so there's always some Pacific activity going on and yes. a lot of activity at the Pacific churches and um, you know, I find it's a real centre for Pacific, mm. even though the numbers aren't, you know, really massive like in Sydney. They're, they're very collected, so you get people together quite often, and it's a nice. Uh, mm. You can you can live in a Pacific community in Canberra. Mm. Yes, especially someone was saying that the best place to find someone um, would be going to church, mm. Mm. and that's where you'd find other people of you yeah. know other Fijians or Tongans or that's right. Samoans. That's right. Or the men have talked about they look around for the cargo groups. Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's a really good place for yeah. them to gather and find out who, who's around. And, yeah, yeah. And I think I think um, we of the Pacific have ways and means of finding each other mm. quickly mm. when you get to a place, you know, because I guess it's it can be a lonely place if we've got no one else, you know, around. Very much so, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. The... The Kava groups, you have had Kava, haven't you, Greg? Oh, uh, many times, yes. Many times. Including many times. In, in Tonga, uh, a, a lot, actually. A lot of uh, Fai Kava sessions in uh, Vaval. In, I, I went there in 1979 for a month, and so it was every night was Fai Kava. And, uh, 79? Yes. Yeah. For a month. That's where I was born. Ah, well, yes. I, was, I was in the village of Tufisi. Tufisi, oh, yeah. it's Okusis, that's yeah. Mahinas. Yeah, Village, so, so George Lavaca's parents yes. looked after me there. That's yeah. right. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I'm sure George will find his way <laughs> to this page to watch you. <laughs> I can't. Well, he's still very busy, you know, working yeah. as a journalist in Tonga for one of the radio stations. Well, they looked after me very well, and they gave me a, a, a sort of a, a feeling, I think, for the Pacific that wasn't just in the books, you know. So I, up till then, I was a Pacific scholar, mm -hmm. and I was doing some uh, thesis work at ANU. But I think to actually live in a village in Tonga and have yes. that experience of uh, living in a family, mm. going out each day to the plantation or going each night to Fakawa, going to the, the, the church feasts and the wikilotu, yes. uh, was really quite an experience. You know, it really came away quite changed. In fact, I was much fatter after I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I think the well, Pacific Islanders are well known for being good hosts. <laughs> Indeed. And mm. They were proud of the fact that I was fatter. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because my, my family did that too, hosting students, mm -hmm. but especially from Japan, because mm -hmm. my father is part Japanese. Mm -hmm. So most, a lot of Japanese students came and stayed at home. Mm. But there was always the, I remember talking to someone and they were doing that too. And they said, when they used to have to prepare for a student, Palangi, from overseas, there was so much they had to do because they're always worried mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, that they wouldn't have the right food yes, or yeah. even the right, you know, simple things like bedding. Yes, yes. You know, and I said, oh, of course we don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. If we go somewhere, we're, we're just happy to have a place to stay. Yeah. And as long as your host is friendly and welcoming, yeah. it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. yeah. But I guess too, especially people from the islands there, Back then, they were always quite worried about how to host. Yeah, so they, they made it very easy for me. I must say, I, we had a, mm. I had a, not many people spoke English there or wanted to, or, no. or felt confident to do so at that point. Yes. But there was a school teacher there in the family who did speak good English, and uh, so she could translate all of the things that were happening. And oh. uh, everyone was incredibly, incredibly good. And I, we went across to other villages for uh, church services, and mm. I met. Mm. Uh, 
Apelli Hauffer's father there. That was oh. a, a real privilege to meet That's him because he gave the, the church service. And yes. I'd met Apelli at ANU and it's nice to meet his father there yes. unexpectedly. Oh, He's giving the church way. service, yeah. There at the next go. village, yeah. Look at his travels. <laughs> In Thailand, he met all these people that we all know yeah. and love. So, so that was in 79. You know, I was thinking about the English language because Siwa and I travel back quite regularly because of the Lo'au students. But what we noticed is, like I left Tonga, I think in 1970 or something like that, went to New Zealand. And it was like, as you said, you know, not many people spoke the language, unless you went to Tonga High School, mm -hmm. where students were taught. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a home where we did speak English. So the transition from Tonga to New Zealand wasn't that difficult language-wise. But when we went back, started going back in, say, from 2010, maybe, most people spoke English. Most programs were in English. Mm. Some of the churches were running programs, you know, in English. The church where my family go, most of the kids' programs are running English. Mm. Mm. And, and I said to see, oh, I don't know whether this is good or not. And most of the young people or children were, you could hear, there was a mix of Tongan and English mm. because most of the schools had turned and were teaching English mm -hmm. always as a first language. Now I hear that they're going back to teaching the Tongan language because they, I guess, there's the idea or the feeling that we start they're losing the language. Losing yes, the language. yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. So I said to say, I'm so glad they're doing that. Mm. I'm so glad they're going back to basics and doing that again, because it is easy to lose a language. Yes. Yeah. I didn't have my language, and Sio was good at, you know, we, we had a law here that we only spoke Tong. Mm. But it meant that Sio started to lose his English. Mm, mm. So we had to go back to just doing the mix. But language is it's crucial. Yeah. It's a crucial, yeah. crucial thing, you know, yeah. in a country. Um, I think I'm trying to think of the where they've where they've made the United Nations have protected the language in the Pacific. Mm. And mm. I can't quite remember where it is, but I thought to the point that they've had to, other people have had to pop in mm. to protect your language. Mm. You know, I think that's it's sad, really. a little bit sad yeah. in a way yeah. that that's what's happening yeah. you know, in the world. Mm. Anyway, great, from 79. Yes. And you're saying that you have... Did you ever go back to Tonga after 79? Well, yes, I did. I, I'd been there before that, actually, in 75 for, for my, my thesis research. Okay. And uh, talking to officials about uh, regionalism, about regional identity. Mm -hmm. And then I saw 79 was the, having more time in the village. Yes. And then after that, it was really going for conferences. Okay. Different points here. Yeah, when really you staying. said 75, was that back to Baba or was that Nukalofa? Uh, that was just in Nukalofa. Nukalofa, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. And then the 79 trip was in Baba'u. Yes, and also just near the palace I was staying with the, the Ilayus as well. Oh, yeah. So that yes. was lovely, yeah, with local. And yes. He used to take me each day out to his plantation so I could yeah. see how people lived in this lovely way, going and getting their own food, and, oh. and uh, I really enjoyed being with him. Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, gosh. Well, the Ilayu family, I think George Ilayu yeah. has got his doctorate now. I was, oh. yes. After and Lupe was a student today in you, so she yes, she did yes, her of course, yes. work there before she joined the foreign ministry. I think yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, fabulous! Mm. Yeah. So you've had you you're just a you know regular. So you know how you know how Tonga sort of works. Well, anyway. very to yeah, a, yeah. to an extent, but I yes. uh, I haven't been there recently for mm. you know, unfortunately, but uh, I've kept kept up with some Tongan friends and. Uh, I keep an interest in the Tom and politics and what's yes. happening there. Yeah. Which is your field. Yeah, yeah. politics is yes. my field and yes. international relations, seeing how yes. Tonga relates to the other countries in the region and mm. that sort of thing. Yeah. How do you see our country at the moment? Well, it's um, I think it's always struggled to find the the easy it's not been easy getting a resource that would give a resource base for the country. Mm -hmm. In some that's just coming from the, the location and from the fact that it's not um, you know, it doesn't have rich mines, or yes. uh, or it's not really set up 
uh, in terms of water supply and so on for, mm. for mass tourism or anything like that. Mm. So it's not, it's not an easy task managing Tonga so that there's a steady income inside the country. But, yes. I, but I think that as the most educated Pacific Island country, in, mm. uh, I think it's been very clever to have Tongans all around the world who mm. send money back. That to me is a very legitimate industry to have. It's, it's the people. Industry. It's the people. Yes. The educated people, I think. And uh, that's been the impressive part of, mm. of Tonga, I think. Tonga is a kind of uh, world concept, a, a multilateral yes. concept going all over the world and through Tongan society and then mm. but with the with base back in the, the land of Tonga. Yes. So to me, it's kind of a broader concept than a lot of countries mm. uh, that are more insular. So they're very outgoing. It's a big network of people across the world. Yeah, people across the world. They were saying one year we had $300 million from families mm. overseas. Mm. So people overseas are extreme. I was quite surprised. And people used to say that wasn't real income. That was that was just money coming back from relatives. Yes. It's not an industry. So, no. But now the World Bank sees that as a really important industry. Yes. And yeah. they recognise, as they should, that human resources yes. are very, very important. Absolutely. Not just you know, mining or yeah. minerals on the ground, but yeah. people. Yeah. So it's that education resource that's really paying off now, I think, for Tonga. Mm. Um, mm. And um, I think also it's been, as the oldest country in the region, and uh, it's just the monarchy and, and, the, and, and the continuity of, yes. of culture and tradition and, and of uh, a political system through the colonial period, mm. it's got a particular place in the region that, mm. uh, yes. that, that, that needs to be... Um, Respected, I think, in terms of its role in, in the Central Pacific, and uh, um, I, I think it, it carries that well. I mean, it's not a, um, in some ways, not an easy role, but it's a, it's it's one that uh, is is important. I think. Yes, I think people that we know, and as soon as they find out we're from Tonga, and they ask about the monarchy. Mm. And they're interested to know why they're still a monarchy. Mm. And do people like the monarchy? Mm. Mm. I said, most Thomas love their monarchy. Mm. Even pro-democracy and people, are there, they still love the monarchy. Yeah, yeah. They just wanted uh, something a little bit different. But they, we do love the monarchy. And I said, and most people, after talking to them for a few minutes, will find their way directly linked or, you know, blood-wise to the royal family, mm. or to the chiefs. Mm. And it's really important for Thomas mm. to have that, you know, connection. And I said, well, that must what we do and because we're a small island. Mm. We're not a huge country. Yeah. So somewhere along the line, there'll be some connection. Anyway, blood connection with someone. Yes, yeah. Mm. And I think that holds... People feeling that they they're connected yes. to their monarch, yeah. or to the monarchy, yeah. makes it you know it's one of the reasons why it stays, mm. and it will. I think someone's like, oh, it'll be finished soon. People realise that they do too much of this and do too much of that. I said that actually is a little bit different to how you're thinking about our monarchy. You know, there's well, I think for Australians um, or British people, you know, particularly at the moment, we should be aware of that of that kind of affection mm. is there also mm. for the British monarchy, and uh, yes, so it's uh, an understandable mm. emotion and uh, yes, and feeling. And uh, we met people here. Mm. My, we had friends from Melbourne, true mm. blue Australians, yeah. and, and he was talking about how you know he how he felt yes, yes. quite emotionally tied to yeah. them yes yeah, yeah. to the royal family and you wouldn't think in the breath that he was no, but he no. talked with great respect you know respect of the duke and mm. you know prince philip and how he thought what he thought of him as a man mm. and i was quite surprised because yeah you just think that most people say oh no 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 the monarchy but no this, yes you yeah know, there is a lot hmm. of care and, I, th I guess, connection, you know, even here to the to the British monarchy. Hmm. 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 Well, in my um, time looking at uh, regionalism and international relations of the Pacific, I, I, I met a lot of Tongan people also in that context, so that was really important to me. Um, Sitaveni Halapua, particularly, yes. and we yes. were taught together at the University of the South Pacific. Hmm in 981, where I was there. And I knew him later as in his 
obviously a big role in, in Hawaii. Yes. Um, uh, Stephen Vette was also yes. the person I met in 1975, and I met him again in, in Fiji when he was having different roles in the South Pacific Commission. And yes. That sort of um, Artur Bain was a, a student at ANU and was uh, was also someone I'd met way back in 79 as well as at oh. ANU and so on. So, yes, yeah, so it's been a, quite a network of Tomlins right across in those regional institutions and going back to Mahi Tupanua and his yes. long reign at the, oh, the South course. Pacific Bureau for Economic Cooperation. I, kind of, yes. I, I got to know him quite well early on mm. because mm. he was... Uh, I was really studying that regional institutional network and he was a key player, really. Mm. So that was an important one. And he's, well, Sione Tupanua as well, who was yes. there as a lecturer at the university yes. when I was there in 1981. Yeah, so a lot of different people, when I think of it, that I've met over the years in the different roles, in the regional roles. And you're um, talking about all these people, and most of the people that are watching this program know these people, mm. and they're feeling quite connected to you now. Because <laughs> this Palangi man is here to talk about people that they know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. people they're related to, yes. people they love and care about. Yes. So, yes, that's good. You know, connection. Hmm. I think it's it's really. I think most people like to have a connection with other people, but hmm. especially our people, connection is so important. Hmm. Hmm. You go into a seal was saying, you go into a function, or even if you walk into a cover group, and then the men start to look at you, and then you say your name, and there'll be some in that cover group who have a connection to you, hmm. and straight away you're made to feel at home. Hmm. Hmm. So that. You know, I guess that connection is really important. We build a connection here, Greg. Mm, that's right. Well, I, what I really loved, loved about uh, the Faikava was uh, how that... Uh, people used to say, oh, we, we, we have their own news network right across Tonga mm. through these Kava groups. And when I went to, to, to places in Nukalofa, uh, having come from Vavau, mm. I realised how quickly that occurred. You know, the, within the next night, you've got all the news from Tafisi going yes. into Nukalofa, and, That's and right. then another news is coming in from Australia, and other news is coming off the, mm. the plane from California. Mm. And you just realise how powerful that is as a, a networking Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. people, the fact that every night people are sitting around the carver bowl talking yes. and sharing that news and the links. Yes. Yeah. And they, and they say women talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we Pacific Islanders, we talk, we love to talk. And they talk about the coconut wireless. Mm, and mm. I remember when we were going to school in New Zealand and every year we'd come back for school holidays. And before we'd even get home, there'll be phone calls. Oh, they said, because people went to the airport. I don't know about now, but people went to the airport to see who was coming, mm. not to meet family, just to see who was coming, you know. Mm. And then they'll tell someone and they'll ring someone. So by the time we reached home from the airport, most of the island and most of Nugalov would know that the, the kids were home. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And then, That's and then they'll visit and yeah. come say hello. It's a great strength for a society, I yes. think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And still, mm. because sometimes I forget. Mm. And I and see what will say something. And I say, how did they know? <laughs> and you look at me as if to say, Where Of course are they know. <laughs> What yeah. do you mean, how do they know? Yeah, yeah. And people make it a business, mm. their business to know, yeah, you know. Yeah. Not just family, but just to know. Yes. So mm. I guess there will be a bit of the coconut wireless. Now we've got <laughs> Facebook. Yes, yes. And, you yeah. know, people knowing that you're here. Mm. And some people will remember your face too, mm. Mm. you know. And, most, and I know that especially George will be interested and would want to say hello. Mm. We haven't seen him in a while. He's still because on radio, right? He's still there. Yeah. Mm. Still that voice. Mm. And I said to him, you know, you've got, you're, you're good for radio because mm. they don't have to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Just that oh. beautiful voice. Yes, yes. You know? Because yeah, yeah. I, I said, you're such a little man and yeah. the voice yeah. comes out of, you know? Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. voice. His father had that voice too, yeah. So take it, yeah. Oh, so, mm. okay. Mm. Yes. Well, you know, it's funny how, how there's mm. connections. My um, grandson goes to school with Penny, his granddaughter, and they're very good friends and they've joined the choir. So they've, you know, they're running around as though they're closely related. Mm. Mm. They call them each other brother and sister because mm. they come from Tonga. Mm. 
And like my grandson Scott, maybe he's a, you know, blood wise he's got a quarter of whatever they call. And Penny the same too. But no, we're Tongan mm. and we're brother and sister. Mm. So, you know, that's mm. come mm. through mm. all the way through. With um talking about Tonga, you know, Greg, I know you you've had a lot to do with, with our Tongan people. I want to ask you what strikes you about Tongans, you mm. know, apart from us looking beautiful and whatever. Well, exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, I think it's that it is that community. I, I think it mm. does strike you. I mean, it's coming from Australia, suburbs and so on, and you go into a village mm. and you realise the generosity of people and the community that occurs within the, within the church group that I was in yes. and the feasting and so on. Yes. Um, the simple... Uh, joys of life, going out each yes. each uh, evening to go coconut crabbing and mm. uh, putting the crabs on the open fire and eating and then uh, just going out uh, in the boat fishing and uh, yeah, just the simple, simple simple things but bringing the food back and sharing it and then the mm. I love the evenings in the, the, the carver group, I love the sound yes. of the, the pounding of the carver oh, on gosh. the evening air. Just Sadly, they very... don't pound them anymore, Greg. Yeah, oh, really? It comes in packets, ah. already pound. And I like the humour. The, the, it's hilarious. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of joking, and even though I couldn't speak Tongan, mm. you could tell but you could, the jokes yeah. were going yes. strong. It's particularly around the the attempts by the men to charm yes. the woman who was uh, mixing yes. the carver. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I was introduced to carver life or mm. carver group when I met Siwa because mm. I didn't grow up, you know, religion-wise, mm. we didn't partake. Okay. Yeah. Men also. So when I met Siwa and I was introduced to men drinking carver, mm. I thought, fancy missing out on this all my life. Yeah, it's very, it is a, it's a mysterious yes. concept about what, around it that um, we had a little carver group for my students in, in uh, Suva. Mm. Uh, recently, I've been working there recently for five years and uh, uh, I love just being in, in that carver group with them and the kind of sacred quality they gave to the carver bowl and to the, the sound, yes. the quietness around it and then the, but then the singing and then the... There's so many Always. aspects to it, the talking, and, but there is a kind of a, a very big difference in getting together with beers or it alcohol. Is. It's a whole yes. different atmosphere. Mm. And... Um, uh, of sharing and there's some, something about it that, that is uh, quite mysterious, actually. Mm, mm. It is, because I'd never tasted. Mm. So, and friends of mine from work were quite interested in wanting to taste kava. Mm. So these were all Australian women or women, non-Tongan women. Mm. So I asked you and he said, I'll host it. I'll mm. be the daughter. Mm. So he made us a bowl and we came. I think we were here. We met here. On the Saturday morning at about 10 o'clock, 7.30, we were still sitting around this bowl and mm. we didn't realise the time had gone. Mm. But this is what I mean about this stuff. Yeah, it's not really the taste. It's, it's, it's no. really the whole process. It's the whole it's concept right. and the, uh, around it, the ideas and the the, um, the the feeling that arises from the, the yeah. bowl. Yeah, it's just it's something there. And sitting there just enjoying being together yeah. and he sang for us. Yeah. But that was one of the things I loved was hearing these men sing. Yes, that's they a marvellous... They used to meet out in the garage. Yes, yes. You know, and... That is that is a marvellous memory for me as well. Yes. And uh, the way that everyone can just fit into a four-part harmony and just wherever they want to go. I know. The falsetto or bass, they just move between whoever else has started. That's right. It's very clever. Very clever. <laughs> and very beautiful, yeah. And I do. I On the evening air enough. in a village, there's nothing quite like it. Yes. Do you hear that? And yes. the pounding of the carver. <laughs> yes. I like that pounding. It's very meditative, yeah. Mm. I remember that sound mm. of yeah. two rocks, and I remember mm. not knowing what it was, mm. And being told that they were making this carbon, I didn't know what that was. Mm. But anyway, it was hearing these rocks and mm. two rocks together and, mm. and pounding. And I said to Siwa, you know, maybe it should come back somewhere. Mm. Mm. The pounding, I know it's a hassle, mm. pounding kava, but just it, hearing that sound of kava pounding, mm. you know, and then the making of it and just the process. Yes. Yeah. It's a you know the process of making it, and I said to him so because I had to. It was like I was a non-Tongan, not experiencing that, not having men knock on my door to come and have kava. Mm. So I said, what do you actually talk about when you go to someone's house? 
And he said, well, there's someone usually does the talking. Mm. The man that's interested in the young woman usually doesn't say anything. <laughs> And the other go-between always gets yes, the girl, the right? <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard that too. And, he, and I said, oh, so what do the other men do? Oh, we sing and we, you know, accompany him. Have a cigarette. Have a cigarette. <laughs> and if we stay there, what does it say? If we stay there until daybreak, mm. they have to provide food mm -hmm. for her and her family. Ah. So it's usually the boys go out and roast a pig or something. Yeah, and yeah. I said, damn it. I missed out on all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, I do have the pleasure of listening to the boys sing now and again, if, mm. you know, if we happen to be around. So, Greg, we're coming to the end of our storytelling. What else do you want to tell me about? Well, I do want to tell you about Apelle Haofa. Yes, uh, please. He, he was the biggest intellectual influence but on me, I think. Mm. from the Pacific. I, I love still reading his... There's a book of his essays, all the essays put together. Yes. And I still love reading those. Because yes. he, he he just had such a broader sensibility mm. on the whole Pacific. Mm. And I think he still sort of stands out as the great intellectual of the yes. Pacific, the great uh, regional intellectual that, that spoke to so many people, mm. having you know spent that time in Papua New Guinea but also in Fiji. And yes. So I knew him from 1975 when I, he was a student at ANU. Mm. Uh, right through to, I went to his funeral actually, and, and to the, when yes. when uh, they buried him at his land in in Fiji, yeah. one and Yeah. And we, in between those times, I'd had quite long sessions with him talking about regionalism, regional identity, regional cooperation, those sorts of things that we shared interests in in terms of how to create that kind of uh, cooperation across yes. uh, across the Pacific. And uh, uh, he was concerned about that at the USP, but it was also Trying to get the right, that, to have that cooperation on the right basis, and I think that's what his ideas were always very influential for me. Yeah, mm. so I do miss him terribly. Yes, and but I still read his his work reg regularly. It's so beautifully mm. written as well. Yes, it's it's really a model oh, for our students. Yes, yeah. and I think you know a lot of people miss him. Mm. A lot of people have continuous conversations mm. about him, and so we should. Yeah, you know, yeah. especially with this man. And I know Siwa and his colleagues talk about, about him a great deal and still write about him mm, a great mm, deal. Mm. And it's so important people like that, mm, you know, mm. that we don't forget. And students come up and they, you know. Yeah. yeah. I know the, um, someone popped in the other day and Siwa referred him on to go and have a look at his work, mm, mm. read it. And then come back and talk to me. Yes. And see what you find. And I yeah. think that it's there's so much there. Over so many years, he, he and the different themes he covered at different yes. points in his life have all been important. Yes. Right back to when he was 25, he was writing beautiful essays yeah. that were taking on the whole of anthropology, and then he was taking on the whole of economics, and then yeah. I mean, he really was thinking outside the box all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you, you just remind me of this amazing man. Mm. And every time we have a gathering here of colleagues, he was colleagues that have come from overseas, they always come back to chat him about their belly and mm -hmm. their stories. Some of them are really funny stories. I was going to say, he was a very funny guy as well, and, and very uh, sacrilegious, and not sacrilegious <laughs> in, in, uh, against the church, but he was against you yes. know, authority that was just uh, pompous and so on. He was just he always, always uh, making fun of things, and yeah. yeah, he was hilarious really. And we mm. need people like that in our communities. Mm. You know, to keep talking and to keep yes, people yeah. aware, you know, yeah. of other possibilities. But um, and I, I often yeah. think if his his father, guys, brought up Methodist as well, and uh, we talked about that. And he, he was his father was this pastor, and uh, and he he'd gone away from the church, and even and just before he died, he was um, sitting outside the church. He used to sit on the uh, stairs and listen to the oh. listen to the thing, but he didn't come in. Uh, in those uh, those weeks, I was told. So uh, mm. that was interesting, and uh, but I do remember the father had that his presence as well. But yeah. it was a very interesting life uh, that he'd had in terms of right across the Pacific. Mm. And the Fijian chiefs from the Wanandoi came round to bring his body into their land. Yes. And so he'd, he'd been accepted in that valley mm. outside Suva, mm. uh, a beautiful part of the, of the land. 
And uh, so he had that Fijian roots, he had the yes. Papua New Guinea roots, he had the yes. Tom- so he's really a Pan Pacific person. Yes, mm. yes. He could talk to everybody. Yes, mm. absolutely. Mm. And everyone, you know, people listened mm. to him, mm. took it all in. That's right. Yeah, so a lot of influences for me from Tonga over the years. Yeah. Very kind people like George Lavaka's father and mother yes. and uh, their family who looked after me. And, and that Eli Yu's there in Nukalofa. Eli Yu's looked after me in Nukalofa. Mm. And uh, over the years, the yeah, the people like Steve Halapur and others have been very yes. kind. And, yeah. Mm. Well, you have to go back. Mm, indeed. You must come back must and come visit. Back. Yes. <laughs> Once everything opens up, we don't know when that's going to mm. happen. We sit and wait yes. and wonder whether we're ever going to go back. But this keeps us in contact indeed. with people. Indeed. You know. And, you know, you talked about Ebeli Hawafa. It's a wonderful life. But what a life you've had, Greg. Mm. Not you've had, you're having. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Say, you've had and you're having. No, I'm still having. <laughs> you're still having. Yeah. No, and, I'm... you know, more and more and more. And I think people will be interested to know how the, you know, how you're traveling and how you're going mm-hmm. and all the new projects. Yeah. And I think on Friday that program is going to be wonderful too. So... Right. Thank you. Unless you have something else to say to our no, listeners and watchers. Uh, I'll say more on Friday. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Professor Greg Fryer. Mm. Ma lo bito. Thank you so much for coming in today to lo ao. And um, maybe next time we'll have a carnival. ball. It feels like you need to have a ball <laughs> or something. But thank you for coming. Ma lo. Ma lo bito. Thank you for watching. And um, don't forget, he's coming back on Friday. Thank you very much. Malo abidum ofalaya kadigmo dogoto.